Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. Since you can tell a lot about a person by where he or she lives, I thought I'd introduce myself by showing you my room. As you can see, I keep it pretty neat. Of course, I don't spend that much time in here. I always seem to be off solving mysteries. Anyway, here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. When Chantal told me you were just a young thing, well, I thought she was pulling my leg. But you're not much older than my little girl, Freddie. Well, if one of the people at the lodge is to blame for all those accidents, Chantal thinks somebody like me has a better chance of figuring out who it is than somebody more, you know, hard-nosed. Chantal has a bad habit of making up her mind without thinking things clear through. Uh, no need for you to tell her I said that, of course. Is she still in Edmonton? Afraid so. Insurance company's given her and her lawyers a real hard time. Left running the lodge up to me. Which is why I'm not real crazy about the idea of having somebody new underfoot. Especially if something else happens. I won't be underfoot, Mr. Randall. And I may be young, but I'm no novice when it comes to solving mysteries. We're here, so you'll get to prove yourself soon enough. Ooh. You hear that? What was that? Was anyone in the bunkhouse when it exploded? No, ma'am. Uh, everyone here at the lodge is accounted for. Oh, that's where Elsa and Becky had been living. Guess it was a good thing they quit after all. Elsa was my maid and Becky was my cook. Does the sheriff have any idea why the bunkhouse exploded? He said he'd know more after the lab was done running tests on the debris he'd collected. He did say the blast was pretty powerful. One of his deputies found the knob to the back door clear out on the highway. Oh, that does it. Nancy, you have to find out who or what is behind these incidents, and you have to do it fast. You sure you don't want to give your daddy a call? My dad runs a whole chain of resorts, Ollie. If you think I'm going to admit to him that I can't handle running just one, guess again. Besides... Nancy comes highly recommended, and I'm sure she's got a foolproof plan for getting to the bottom of this. Don't you, Nancy? Well, I was thinking that maybe I'd just be your new maid. You want to be my maid? That would give me access to everyone's room, and I could question people without making them overly suspicious. Oh, yeah, that's an excellent idea. All right, you're my new maid. In fact, you're my new cook, too. Your cook? Well, that way, Ollie can stop pretending he can even read a recipe, let alone follow one. You'll have even more excuses to talk to the guests, and I won't have to pay anyone. Why, well, I think that's a fine idea, ma'am. Now, we're not taking any more guests until this accident thing is cleared up. So I want both of you to make sure that the four guests we have are well taken care of. Especially that Olympic-caliber cross-country skier from Fredonia, Yanni Volstaya. The flair he brings to the lodge is just what I need to attract the European jet-setting crowd. I'm going to be pretty busy trying to get rid of that wolf, Chantal. We heard it howl last night. 
just before the bunkhouse blew up. Well, do whatever you have to, Ollie. Oh, and Nancy, I want you to call this police detective I've hired as a consultant. I put his number on the phone there at the lodge. In fact, I think you know him. Tino Balducci? I gotta go. My lawyer's here. Good luck, you guys, and keep me posted. Coming! Tino Balducci! I'll get you a master key and leave it in your room. If you need anything else, I'll be in the basement. This must be the key Ollie said he'd leave for me. And this must be a list of which guest is in what room. That'll come in handy. Well, hello there. You must be the new maid Ollie told us about. I'm Bill Kessler. This guy's Lou Talbot. Hey. What's your name again? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Just thought I'd come over and say hello. Well, Lou here's a grad student. Art major, of all things. You're probably gonna need a jackhammer and some hydrochloric acid to clean his room, eh? Are you two old friends? Not hardly. I've known Lou for all of, what? About a week, I guess. I checked in right after he did. We sat down after breakfast one morning and discovered that this fox and geese game is pretty darn fun. I've been whipping his tail ever since. Is this the first time you've been to the lodge? Yep, sure is. I came for the ice fishing. Of course, knowing there's a renegade wolf running around is kind of dampened my enthusiasm. Have you seen the wolf? Just heard it. Every night since I've been here, in fact. Gets creepier each time. They should get rid of it, and the sooner the better. They didn't put up with wolves prowling around this place 40 years ago, and they shouldn't put up with them now. What are you, Little Red Riding Hood? That wolf's not hurting anybody. People should just leave it alone. You'll be singing a different tune when it has some little kid for breakfast, then has you for lunch. Not gonna happen, dude. Trust me, if something bad can happen, chances are it eventually will, dude. Hey, I know what you can do. Shovel the snow off the skating pond so we can do some speed skating. Lou here thinks he's faster than me. You're like ancient. Of course I'm faster than you. You may have youth on your side, my friend, but I've been working construction since before you were born, which means I am more fit now than you will ever be. Get that pond shoveled so we can settle this, okay, kiddo? Consider it done. I'm staying out of there until I have to fix a meal.
which Trapper Dan found near the lodge. He believed it came from a race of giants known as Rexes. That bone's not there. I wonder what happened to it. Oh, no. Is something wrong? You, you are what is wrong. Gentle said there would be no more guests to make noise at all hours and disturb my training. Yet what stands before me? A new guest. No, no, I'm not a guest. I'm Nancy Drew, the new maid. And the new cook. Forgive me. Allow me to start over. I am Yanni Volksteyer. I am here to train for the Eastern European Cross Country Championship. I spend my days doing interval work, drills, and isometric exercises. I follow a strict program, one painstakingly designed by a team of the best coaches in Fredonia. In fact, under no circumstances are you to use your key to let anyone into my room. My competitors are constantly spying on me, trying to steal my techniques. You think someone's spying on you way out here? One can never be too careful, so know this. If anything is missing or so much as out of place in my room, you can expect a visit from me, and it will not be a pleasant one. That's all for now. We'll talk again, I'm sure. Need something? You look busy. What are you making? I'm building something that's gonna solve all our problems. A wolf trap. One that'll finish off that thing out there once and for all. You think the wolf is causing the accidents? Not a doubt in my mind. Everything was a-okay till it showed up and started howling. It's bad luck. And something's protecting it. Something unnatural. Does Ms. Mawikwe know you're doing this? She knows she doesn't want that thing around her guests. And you heard her. I'm supposed to do whatever I think is necessary to get rid of it. But it's not like it's attacking people. Let me tell you something. Yesterday I went looking for it. I tracked it and finally found it, sitting across the creek, not 20 yards away from me, just staring at me. So I raised my rifle, drew a bead, and fired. Easiest shot I've ever taken in my life. And I missed. So I fired again. And I missed, and then I missed again, and again, and all the while it just sat there staring until finally it just stood up, walked toward the brush just as calm as could be, and disappeared. Wild animals just don't act like that, and I just don't miss like that. There's something real weird about that wolf, and I ain't gonna rest till I get rid of it. So maybe we should just find something else to jaw about. You met my little girl yet? No, but you mentioned that her name is Freddy? Yep. Spends most of her time outside. She built herself a little snow fort. Just sits out there waiting for somebody to go by so she can pick a snowball fight with them. I keep asking her how she manages to stay warm all day, but she won't tell me. Says she's got a secret weapon. <laughs> yeah, she's something. I'll get out of your hair now. See you later.
Guess I better get this pawn shoveled off. That ought to do it. Wait a second. Those look like wolf tracks. Maybe I should find out where they go. Weird. Looks like some kind of monument. What's this doing here? Strange. It's halfway in and halfway out. This thing must open up somehow. like an explosion. What's that noise? <gasps> oh no! <laughs> I'm buried in 
snow. I try to dig myself out before I run out of air. I'll never make it. I can barely breathe. Someone's up there. Help! I'm down here! Right under you! Can you hear me? Help! I can't breathe! I heard you. Thank goodness. It's okay. I'm not real happy about the situation either. It's gone, but thanks to that hole it dug, I can breathe again. Now, if I can just pull myself out. This must have been made by the explosion I heard. A fossil. Cool. Wonder what kind of rocks those are. I better not follow this trail until I know for sure where it goes. Huh. Who goes there? Uh, Nancy Drew? Nancy Drew shall not pass unless and until she proves herself worthy. And how does she do that? By hitting the snow princess ten times. Snowballs only, no ice balls. What are ice balls? Snowballs made of ice. If you get hit with one, it can knock you out. So don't throw it here, I'll tell my dad. You must be Ollie's daughter, Freddy. I am the Snow Princess. Prepare to defend yourself. A nice fishing shack. A nice warm one at that. The face from a clock, it's all melted. Part of the timing device that was used to trigger the bomb that blew up the bunkhouse, maybe? Ah, 
warm again. This is so invigorating. What you need? Have you seen that strange concrete monument thing that's out there on the trail? Trapper Dan's Needle? Of course. What can you tell me about it? All I can tell you is it was built by the same stir-crazy old guy who built this place. Maybe something in that display up in the lobby will tell you what you want to know. Did you know there was an avalanche at Chicken Ridge? Sure didn't. Not surprised, though. You call the avalanche patrol? No, should I? You better give those employee instructions I left in your room another look. Reporting avalanches is part of your job. Can you tell me more about the accidents that have been happening around here? Nope, sure can. But I kinda need to know. Chantal and those lawyers of hers said I couldn't talk about them. Supposed to direct all questions to her. Sorry. How long have you worked for Chantal? About a year and a half. I was her first hire, best hire, too. I could run this place single-handed if I had to, just like I'm doing now. The first time I talked to Chantal, she mentioned you used to be a rancher. Do you miss ranching? Yeah, a little. Tough life, though. Owned my own spread about 15 years ago. Well, bank owned most of it. And after two bad winters and one bone-dry summer, the bank owned all of it. But I've learned a whole lot since then. I could make it work now. Just need to find the right property, get my hands on enough cash to make a down payment, that's all. Does your wife, Freddie's mom, does she live here too? In the summer she does, but in the winter she goes south. See, she's got this nerve condition that makes her real sensitive to cold. Freddie'd like to go with her, but until Chantal stops putting off giving me that raise she promised me, sending Freddie south too is out of the question. I'll let you get back to work. Good. Nancy, I am glad to see you. Are you all right? You seem upset. You must listen. I was outside skiing very fast, as usual, and suddenly, boom, snow, dirt, rocks, everything went flying into the air right in front of me. There is a mad bomber on the loose. You think it was a bomb? Of course it was a bomb. My competitors bombed the bunkhouse thinking I would be so frightened that I would abandon my training and leave. Only I wasn't frightened, so now they are trying to bomb me. Do you think they're responsible for all the accidents that have been happening around here as well? My competitors and the governments behind them, they are as desperate as they are ruthless. They are capable of anything. They can operate anywhere in the world, under all conditions. It would not surprise me if someone right here in the lodge is right now under their employ. But to them, I say, pa, they do not scare me. I am the best cross-country skier in the world. I will neutralize their petty threats with my excellent strength, skill, and speed. I am sorry. Enough about my problems. Did you want something? Have you ever seen the wolf while you were out training? No, for which I am very grateful. In my country, in Fredonia, it is said that the gaze of the wolf will make you go blind. Really? They are creatures of infinite evil. And that is all I am going to say on the matter. I have disturbed you long enough. Kavichinaya.
Order up. Order up. Order up. Order up. Order up. <laughs> huh? Oh. Hey. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. Could have fooled me. What do you want? Since Mr. Talbot isn't here, could I play a game of fox and geese with you? You bet. Have a seat. Here are the rules. The white pieces are the geese. The black piece is the fox. The goal of the geese is to corner the fox so he can't move, while the goal of the fox is to gobble up geese so that they can't corner him. The geese can only move forward along a line to the next point, either directly forwards, diagonally, or sideways. Same thing for the fox, except when he's next to a goose that has an empty spot directly behind it. He can jump over it... Gobble it up. Right. Gobble it up and remove it from the board. You just take turns and play until somebody wins and somebody loses. I'll be the fox. Ready? You bet.
okay if we start over? Where this this is where I dumped the laundry bag. Shoot, I can't clean this room yet. I don't have anything to put the dirty laundry in. Looks like Elsa was having major boyfriend problems. Chantal, this is my formal notice of resignation. Please call me at 555-2383 if you expect any delay with a check. Elsa.
I'm not sure helped is the right word, Mr. Balducci. Please, call me Tino. In fact, Tino, I'm a little surprised you're still in law enforcement, considering some of the unethical, if not illegal, stunts you pulled back then. Hey, that's all behind me. Ancient history. Water under the bridge. So, looks like we're gonna be working together on this sabotage thing, huh? Looks like. Well, you'll be happy to know that I'm working on something that'll pretty much crack this case wide open. But in the meantime, what can I do you for? I'm curious. How do you know Chantal? Friend of a friend heard about all the problems she was having up there and immediately figured she could use my crime-solving expertise. So I gave her a call, we had lunch, we hit it off, and bingo. I got myself a new client. How many clients do you have? I have enough. I mean, you know, you go spreading yourself too thin in this business, and the next thing you know, crime out the wazoo. Hey, look, you sure you don't need a hint or something? I guess maybe I could use some advice. Now you're talking. What do you want to know? Bill Kessler wants me to catch a two-foot northern pike, only my fishing skills seem to be pretty much non-existent. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. I could catch a two-foot northern pike in my sleep. Look, first off, check out the computer in the lobby so you know what a northern pike looks like. Then, when you're fishing, just click to get your hook to drop down or rise up. And if you want a really hot tip, just click on the mouth of a fish coming toward your line. Next thing you know, bam, you got yourself a fish. Just keep at it till you catch a northern pike that's two feet long. Now, you'll probably never be as good at fishing as, say, me, but you'll get the hang of it. Excellent. It was nothing. Ciao for now. I'm staying out of there until I have to fix a meal.
pick up the phone, Nancy. You didn't cook dinner. What few guests I had were furious, to say nothing of starving. Now go to the kitchen and get ready to cook. And please, do it right. Okay. One more thing. Ask Yanni if it would be all right if I used his name and picture on the Icicle Creek Lodge website. I mean, when I finally have a website, it would be great publicity, okay? Sure. Good. Talk to you soon. I can't serve this. Make it again. Order up.
Order up. Order up. Order up. Order up.
Sheriff's office, this is Mohican. Hi, this is Nancy Drew at the Icicle Creek Lodge. We met the other night when you were investigating the bunkhouse explosion. Oh, yeah, that uh, bright kid from the States. Uh, what do you need? Well, I found a melted clock face close to where the bunkhouse used to be, and I wondered if it could have been what triggered the explosion. You know, the timer. I found that clock face, too. Left it there because any fingerprints on it would have melted away along with everything else. And besides, Ollie Randall said all the room clocks at the lodge looked like that. Could have been one that was in the bunkhouse to begin with. Oh, right. You shouldn't go poking around on your own like that. There could still be explosives lying around. <laughs> Although, I hear it takes a pretty big bang to set off C4. C4? A plastic explosive? That's what blew up the bunkhouse. Lab result came in less than an hour ago. <laughs> Is C4 hard to get? Well, not if you're in the military or do any kind of demolition. In Eastern Europe, it's called Semtex. It's not that hard to handle, either. For somebody who's had training in explosives, it's a piece of cake. Do you need some kind of permit to hunt wolves around here? No, ma'am. You mean Ollie Randall can go after that white wolf that's been hanging around outside the lodge and just shoot it? Yes, ma'am. It's always open season on wolves out here. You can kill as many of them as you want. Somehow that doesn't seem right. Well, the animals wolves go after don't have a problem with it. I can guarantee you that. I'll let you get back to work. Goodbye. Report all avalanches to the avalanche patrol. I'm calling from the Icicle Creek Lodge, but I wanted to report an avalanche at Chicken Ridge. Anyone injured or trapped? Uh, not anymore. We'll check it out. Thanks for the heads up. Hey, wait a minute. You know Ollie Randall? The handyman here at the lodge? He's also on the patrol. Do me a favor and tell him that the explosives training in Calgary has been postponed till next month. Explosives training? Sometimes the patrol has to use explosives to bring down unstable snow. Yearly training sessions are mandatory. Ollie will know what I'm talking about. I'll tell him. Appreciate it. One more thing. Have any of you guys been setting off explosives anywhere near the Icicle Creek Lodge recently? Nope, sure haven't. Well, thanks. Bye. What you need? The Avalanche Patrol asked me to tell you that the explosives training session in Calgary has been postponed till next month. Well, hallelujah. I didn't really want to go anywhere until I finished off that wolf. Now I won't have to. So, you're on the Avalanche Patrol, huh? Yep. Dang. I just remembered. Patrol wants me to keep an eye on Skookum Ridge for the next couple of weeks. Here. There's the key to the snowmobile. Take it out to Skookum Ridge and see if there's been an avalanche. You want me to check it out? Seat seated so you don't have to worry about the cold. 
Make sure you call the patrol and give them a report when you're done. You can handle that, can't you? You bet. Good. Two more things. That Bill Kessler guy's getting bored being the only one around here doing any ice fishing. He wants competition. So if he says anything to you, just remember that Chantal wants you to keep the guests we got happy. Other thing is, a cold snap's on its way. You think it's cold now? Just wait. Gotta be real careful anytime you're outside. So, we done here? I'd better get back upstairs. Good. I should put on a coat before I go outside. The sign's not buried, so I guess there hasn't been an avalanche. Feel warmer already. You check out Skookum Ridge? Yep, no avalanche. There's your snowmobile key. You make a report to the avalanche patrol? Not yet. That's okay. I'll call them. What else do you want? That's all the questions I had. Keep me posted. Ah, I'm glad for the chance to talk once again. There is something I must explain. There is? What I said before, about wolves. It is because my grandmother was killed by wolves. Killed and devoured. Are you serious? Years ago, when my mother was a little girl, her mother, my grandmother, was on her way back from the village on her motor scooter, which was and still is the only means of transportation most Fredonians can afford. It was January, and the sun had just set, and it was dark, very cold. There were thousands of wolves in the countryside that winter. At night, they would roam in huge, hungry packs. My grandmother was halfway home when she came upon a young man waving from the side of the road for her to stop. He, too, had been on a scooter, but his had broken down, and wolves were gathering all around him, preparing to attack. 
My grandmother, of course, stopped, and he leapt on behind her, and they took off down the road with the wolves, dozens of them chasing after them. But with two people riding it, her scooter was slow, much too slow, and the wolves soon caught up with them. And when one of the wolves seized my grandmother's boot in its teeth and started to pull, instead of helping her, the man pushed her off the bike. It instantly gained speed and he got away. My grandmother, set upon by the wolves, did not. If she died, how do you know that's what happened? Tormented by guilt, the young man eventually confessed. He went to prison for several years, and the wolves were hunted year-round until the countryside was rid of them. But the damage was done. And so, I'm happy to talk to you about any subject except wolves. About them, I have nothing to say. Chantal would like to use your name and picture on her website when she gets it up and running. Would that be okay? I'm sorry, but no. Oh, well, so much for that. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. It has been a pleasure. What's up? So you go to school in California? Yep. University of California at Brea. What kind of degree are you working on? Master of Fine Arts. Cool. So what's your favorite medium? What is this, like the Spanish Inquisition? Hey, give her a break. She's just trying to make pleasant conversation. Oh, right. Um, oh, my favorite medium? Dirt. You paint with dirt? I create works of art by manipulating naturally occurring geophysical substances like dirt. Sometimes I just use my hands, but most of the time heavy machinery is involved. Oh, brother. Nobody understands my art. But that's cool. To be great is to be misunderstood. FYI, Ralph Waldo Emerson said that. Do you ever see anyone else when you're out there snowshoeing? I see that Yanni guy sometimes. I'll be plodding along and he'll go zooming by. Those skis of his are like rockets, man. He's all like zippy zoom. Do you ever hear explosions? Yeah, and they freak me out. It doesn't take a very big sound to trigger an avalanche. And when you're out there by yourself, nothing will ruin your day faster than a couple of tons of snow roaring your way at 100 miles an hour. Tell me about it. What do you think about all the weird things that have been happening around here? I think they're kind of cool. Accidents make life colorful, you know? You wouldn't be saying that if you were the one who'd slipped on those ice-covered stairs or eaten that bad potato salad or had those four flat tires. Hey, I had that broken window. Broken window? I went snowshoeing on, like, the third day I was here, and when I got back, the window in my room was broken. Glass was all over the place. Was anything missing from your room? Nah, it wasn't a burglary. It was like the window just decided to break. I mean... There was no rock on the floor, no bullet, no nothing. It was the wolf. Tried to jump up into your room, but didn't quite make it. That's bogus, dude. My room's on the second floor, and besides, wolves don't do stuff like that. Hey, that wolf does a lot of stuff wolves aren't supposed to do. That's why it needs to be hunted down. It's just doing its thing, man. Get off its case. Anyway, my window broke and nobody knows why. Pretty awesome, huh? Is this your first time at the lodge? Yep. My car broke down on my way to Lake Louise last summer. Pulled in here to wait for the tow truck and figured it'd be a cool place to visit during the winter, so here I am. So, you like to snowshoe? I like doing stuff outside. Snowshoeing's about all I can afford. Is it a hard sport to learn? You don't learn how to snowshoe. If you need to get through snow that's too deep to walk through, you slap on some snowshoes and you just do it. I'll catch you later. Happy trails. Hey, excellent job on the snow shoveling, eh? We had ourselves one fine time out there because of you, especially Lou here. I beat him five times. By the slimmest of margins, which is why now he's too chicken to go mano a mano with me out there in the ice fishing shack. Snowshoeing's my thing, dude. Besides, it's animal cruelty. Give me a break. You ever been ice fishing? As a matter of fact, I have. Excellent. Here's the deal. I need some competition, so I want you to go out there and try to catch a bigger fish than I caught yesterday, which means you gotta catch a two-foot northern pike. 
Now, it's a bit of a hike out to the lake, but the shack is solar heated, so it's nice and warm inside. So what do you say, kiddo? You game? Anything to make you guests happy. Atta girl. I'll see you two later, okay? See you later. Hey, little Miss Fisherman. What can I do for you? Are you by any chance related to Rolf Kessler, the guy who used to build carousels around the turn of the last century? No idea. I better get going. Drop by any time. <sighs> I'm starting to get really cold. Oh my gosh. It looks like someone came in here and just wrecked everything, including the fishing gear. <sighs> so much for catching a two-foot northern pike. Hmm. Left behind by whoever trashed this place, maybe? 202-555-7237. That's a U.S. phone number. I can't fish without a hook and line. <sighs> I'm starting to get really cold. warmer already. Somebody left me a note. Little Miss Fisherman, what can I do for you? I hate to tell you this, but someone wrecked all the fishing gear that was in the fishing shack. What? You're kidding. So my gear's ruined? Completely. So much for our little fishing contest. Wait a minute. Ollie Ice fishes? Go ask him for a hook and line, and don't take no for an answer. Well, I'll let you get back to beating Lou. Drop by any time. What you need. Someone went into the ice fishing shack and ruined all of Bill Kessler's equipment. Probably some animal-loving eco-fanatic who figured it was time to save the fish. 
You don't by any chance have a hook and line I could borrow, do you? Say no more. There's my tackle box. It's all yours. Kessler tried to rope me into competing with him, but I can't very well do that when you've got my hook and line now, can I? No, I don't suppose you can. What else do you want? I'll let you get back to work. Keep me posted. I'm starting to get really cold. That won't do. Doesn't quite measure up. Wrong again. I broke my line. I broke my line. Small.
close, but no cigar. I snagged a log. There goes my line. That won't do. I broke my line. Rats, too small. I snagged a sturgeon. Huh, there goes my line. There we go, a two foot northern pike. No more fishing for me. Oh my gosh, whoever threw that ice ball at me must have set off an explosion that shattered the ice. And my jacket's gone. No wonder I'm so cold. Ooh. A coat. I need to make it to shore by jumping from ice floe to ice floe and put on that coat before I freeze to death.
I don't know whose this is or why that wolf left it here, but at least now I won't freeze to death. Ah, much better. I was really cold. There's a note in one of the pockets. Since I can't go back the way I came, maybe these tracks will lead me to shelter. Avalanche Ridge. Ugh, not exactly reassuring. The snow's so deep, I'm sinking up to my knees. If I want to follow those tracks, I'm going to need some snowshoes. Ski tracks. Probably Yanni's. I bet if I follow them, I'll wind up back at the lodge. If I don't get warm soon, I may not make it. feel warmer already. Nancy, hi! What the heck happened out there? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? I walked out to Icicle Lake to see how you were doing in the fishing shack, only there wasn't any fishing shack. There wasn't even a lake. The ice was all busted up like somebody dropped a bomb on it. All I know is, after I caught that two-foot northern pike, I walked outside and someone knocked me unconscious with an ice ball. The next thing I knew, there was an explosion and I was on an ice floe in the middle of the lake with no coat and no fish. Somebody decked you with an ice ball and blew up the lake? Holy moly! The good news is you're okay. The bad news? No more ice fishing. I'll let you get back to your nap. Anytime you want to talk, just wake me up. Well, who are you? I'm Elsa's replacement. Oh, the new maid, thank goodness. I was wondering how much longer the owner expected us to endure these conditions and still pay full price. I'm trying to learn everyone's name. My name is Guadalupe Comillo. My friends call me Lupe. So I should call you Lupe? I hardly think so, dear. For one thing, I don't even know your name. My name's Nancy Drew. Two things, dear. First, the alarm clock is missing from my room. I don't necessarily need another one. I just don't want to be charged for that one, seeing as I have no idea where it went to. Second, be a doll and clean my room first. It'll hardly take you any time at all, especially compared to the other rooms. The other guests are all men. Single men. When my ex moved out of the house, he turned into a complete slob within a week. They can't help it, poor things. It's an unfortunate aberration of the genes. I hate to sound nosy, but what are you doing? Birds. I'm watching birds. That's what I am, you see, a bird watcher. Sometimes I go outside and watch, and sometimes I stay inside. It all depends on what the birds feel like doing and what I feel like doing. So that's what brought you to Icicle Creek Lodge, the birding? Absolutely. The place is a veritable birding paradise, even in winter. In fact, in the short time I've been here, I've seen... Hawks, eagles, orioles, cardinals, jays, nothing truly rare. But to a wildlife lover such as myself, seeing them in such a spectacular setting is thrilling nonetheless. Do you want a book about birds of the Southwest? I might. Why do you ask? Because I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm going to Phoenix next spring, and I'd like to bone up on the birds I'll see down there. I'd love to help you, but 
I'm afraid I left all my bird books at home. Sorry. Have you ever seen the wolf that's been hanging out around here? No. Uh, not that I'm looking for it, of course. Yanni occasionally skis by, and that dullard of a student, I see him snowshoeing occasionally. Uh, but I've yet to see the wolf. Have you seen it? Yeah, up close and personal, as a matter of fact. How did it act? Was it aggressive? Did it look injured? Actually, I think it may have saved my life. Really? Of course, its behavior does suggest that it's had contact with humans before. Have you told anyone else what you just told me? No. Good. Don't. You see, I'd like to see this wolf for myself, and I don't want everyone else going after it and scaring it away. And there's no telling what that trigger-happy handyman might do. So it'll just be our little secret, all right? I'll let you go. Farewell. Chantal's on the phone, Nancy. Ollie says he had to cook lunch. That's your job, remember? Maybe you should just go to the kitchen right now so you can be all ready to cook the next meal, okay? Order up. Order up.
Order up. Order up. You think I'm serving this? You're loco. What do you want? You messed with my rifle, didn't you? This I gotta hear. Excuse me? This fast just came for you. It's from the wacko left-wing wildlife gang that paid you to screw up my rifle so I'd miss that wolf. How dare you talk to me like that? I'm leaving this place right now. Good. You just got yourself an escort off the premises.
This must be where I drop the laundry bag after I'm done cleaning all the rooms. How can I help you? I really need to get somewhere in the backcountry and was thinking you could maybe give me a cross-country ski lesson or two? Out of the question. I don't have the time, the equipment, or, frankly, the desire. I am sorry. Ever see Lou Talbot when you're out there training? The college student? Just yesterday I had to slow down to avoid colliding with him. It ruined my whole session. That's all for now. Come back any time. What you need? Would you happen to know the combination to the lock on the display case that has the snowshoes in it? Only person who'd know that is Chantal. Just cross your fingers that she wrote it down. Gal's got a memory like a butterfly net. Of course, there's no need for you to go repeating that. I couldn't help but overhear the argument you and Ms. Camillo had. She messed up my rifle so I couldn't shoot that wolf, so I tossed her out. Told her to take her little crusade somewhere else. Have you told Chantal that you threw her out? No, not yet. She's not gonna be happy. But by golly, that woman was a menace. Anybody who deliberately sabotaged a man's rifle is capable of anything. But at least now I know why I miss that wolf. And like I told her as I was giving her the bum's rush, next time, I won't miss. That's all the questions I had. See you later. Hi, Chantal. It's Nancy Drew. You know who's behind the accident? Not quite yet. Oh. I think I'm onto something, but I desperately need snowshoes. Could you give me the combination to the lock on the display case so I could use the ones in there? I certainly can, but I'm not going to until you do something for me. Sure. I'm going to fax you a survey that Tino came up with. He says you're to fill most of it out by observing the people staying at the lodge, rather than just asking them the questions outright. He says that would put them on their guard. When it's all sailed out, fax it to Tino. The results will help him come up with a profile that will help you to determine which of our guests is responsible for the accident. Sounds good. Excellent. I'm faxing it to you even as we speak. In fact, it's done. So why don't you go get it right now? I'll wait. Great. I just hope the questions aren't too dumb. Got it. Good. Now remember, when you're done filling it out, fax it directly to Tino. And he wants you to call him before you do so he can turn his machine on. About Tino, I'm not totally comfortable with the idea of consulting with him on this case. Why not? Two heads are always better than one, and I find him to be very knowledgeable and kind of charming. Do you know what he did when we were on that train trip Lori Gerard arranged? He didn't go into a lot of detail, but he did say that that's all water under the bridge. In fact, I insist that if and when you're stumped about something, you ask Tino to help you out. That's what I'm paying him for. Agreed? Agreed. Good. Is it true that you promised Ollie a raise, but you haven't given it to him yet? He told you that? I can't believe it. Meaning... Okay, I mentioned to Ollie once that I thought he maybe deserved a raise. And now every time I turn around, he's all like, Where's the raise you promised me? Where's the raise you promised me? Doesn't he realize I have a few other things to think about right now? I swear, sometimes that crabby little whiner drives me nuts. That's it for now. I have to get going too. Bye!
How can I help you? Would you mind telling me what planet you most identify with? Pluto. Actually, Pluto's not a planet anymore. That is exactly the point. Pluto stirs up passion and controversy, yet it continues undaunted on its course, as do I. Pluto and I, we are as brothers. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. It has been a pleasure. What you need? That's all the questions I had. See you later. Let's see, do I really want to go outside without a coat? I don't think so.
Order up. Order up. No, oh, and by the way, don't go adding paprika to Lou Talbot's food anymore. He hates paprika. Shoot, I can't clean this room yet.
That's for me. This is Lupe. Leave a message and perhaps we'll talk later. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. I'll call you later. Been there, done that. That's finished. That's finished. That's finished. Can't check that off yet. Can't check that off yet. That's finished. That's finished. That's finished. That's finished. Can't check that off yet. Check. Can't check that off yet. Check. 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 Can't check, can't check, can't check that off yet. Been there, done that. Been there, done. Been there, done. Check. What you need. I'd better get back upstairs. Good. Hey, it's Nancy Drew. Did you ask Yanni about using his picture yet? Yes, but he said no. Darn. Well, thanks for trying. I'd like to know more about the accidents. I asked Dolly, but he said you said he wasn't allowed to talk about them. I didn't mean he couldn't talk about them with you. Ugh. I'll give him a call. As for the accidents, the first thing that happened was the worst. The Farringdale family and Becky the cook all came down with food poisoning and had to be hospitalized. Somehow, the potato salad got contaminated, although Becky swears it wasn't because of anything she did. 
I cannot tell you how awful it was. All five people became violently ill at roughly the same time. But were they all in the same room? Of course not. They were spread out all over the lodge. Poor Elsa was cleaning for days. And the odor? Oh my gosh. Anyway. Then Carl Jenkins slipped on the stairs outside and broke his leg. Then Lou Talbot's window was broken. Then Elsa the maid's tires were slashed. Then the phone wires were cut. And then... Oh yeah. And then the Southwaits were almost overcome by fumes when gas started leaking into the sauna. So, who's suing you? No one yet. But my lawyers are afraid it's just a matter of time and are trying to figure out what preventative measures to take. That's it for now. Good. Talk to you soon. Much better. I was really cold. <laughs> 